Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome brothers and sisters. This is Ihsan. May Allah Almighty's divine peace and light and presence, His power, His love, His mercy, His healing and His forgiveness be with you and with me. Beware the gifts of God. What do I mean by that? We have to remember, we have to remind ourselves that Allah Almighty, our Creator, our Lord, wants our happiness, wants what's good for us, wants to give us what is best for us. And we naturally want those things as well. Whether it's a certain degree of material competency and success, whether it's a spouse, whether it is children, right? the things that we want, knowledge, education, learning, the things that we aspire to, the things that we desire, the things that we need, right? we were created with needs. And we desire certain things because they are meant for us. For example, a spouse, children, and things that I mentioned earlier. These are things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants for us. And He created us with these needs. And He created us with the desire for these things so that we can seek them and so that He can grant them to us. And Allah Almighty is generous. He is al karim He wants to give. He wants to love. He wants to support His creation. And He is continually doing so. Yet the danger is that we lose sight of God in the gifts that He provides. That is the danger. He gives us comfort. He gives us all the things that we need. Food, shelter, wealth, material, possessions, family members, spouses, children, all of these things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us these things. But the danger is that we forget Allah as a result of these things. Very often, we will take a path, a path of humility, a path of prayer, a path of reverence, a path of supplication, seeking the things that we need. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives it to us. The danger then is in forgetting what got us to that point and going back to the old self, to the self of heedlessness, the self of ghafla, the self in which we were not present, not seeking God's presence. And when that happens, the very things that He gave to us to remind us of Him as a gift from Him, they end up becoming a curse for us. Very often, we tend to be very supplicant, very mindful, very needy in front of God when we need something. And then when He gives it, we begin to forget. We begin to forget that Allah is our Lord. We supplicate less, we pray less, we're more, we often become less pious, less reverent, less humble, less spiritual. And so, in that case, the gifts from God become a burden, become a curse for us. It doesn't mean that we have to always be in suffering to remember God. Unfortunately, that's often the case for a lot of people. But the truly humble person, the true believer, is always remembering God, is always mindful, especially in good times, especially when he or she is given what they need and what way they seek. What kind of believer would we be? That we become humble, we become pious, we become prayerful, we become repentant. Allah gives us things that we want, puts us in a new direction, puts us in new situations. And then all of a sudden we forget and we go back to being the old self. What ends up inevitably happening is that those very things then end up becoming a curse for us, a burden for us. You may need a job. You may need success in your business and then Allah grants it to you. While you're in need, you're praying, you're being mindful, you're supplicating to Allah, you're being humble, you're being conscious, you're being very aware of your relationship with Allah and your need and dependence on Him. Then Allah gives it to you. And then what happens? We become completely engrossed in the thing, in the work, in the job, in the career, in the business, and we begin to forget about Allah. And what ends up inevitably happening is we become slaves and servants to the very thing that was a gift. That then becomes our Lord. That then becomes our God, a false God. And it becomes inevitably tyrannical and oppressive. That experience inevitably becomes very problematic. We become oppressed by the very thing that was meant to be a gift. That was a blessing from God because we forgot God. Perhaps you are or were in need of a spouse and you prayed and you were humble and you were worshipful and things changed. Allah guided you, you were repentant. Allah blessed you, gives you a spouse. And then you become so engrossed in that relationship and in that marriage and whatever's happening in your family that you begin to now forget your duty to Allah. The very things that granted you gifts from His presence, favors from His divine presence, end up becoming then a curse. And so in this case, this is what I mean. Beware the gifts of God. Allah wants to give you everything. He wants you to be happy, wants you to be successful, wants you to be healthy, but not at the expense of unconsciousness or at the expense of consciousness, I should say. 
Right? We're not meant to become ghafil and heedless, jahil and unconscious as a result of the very gifts. When we do so, those very gifts will become burdensome. They'll become curses. They'll become sources of pain and suffering for us. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants you what you need, be even more pious, more prayerful, more worshipful, more in remembrance, more thankful. And what is the best way to show thanks to Allah? And we talk about gratitude. Allah Almighty says in the Holy Quran, when you are grateful, I will increase you. I will give you even more. But be grateful. And of course, now people talk about this all the time with the law of attraction, the power of gratitude. It's nothing new. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said this in the Quran over 1400 years ago. The Prophet ﷺ conveyed and relayed, when you are grateful, Allah will grant you more. How do we be grateful? The best way to be grateful, the first way to be grateful is through worship, through ibadah. All blessings come with worship, with a life that is centered in, that revolves around the worship and the remembrance of God. Allah Almighty says in the Quran, I have created you, verily, I have created the jinn and the human beings for worship, for my worship. We have to remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created human beings for Him, to know Him, to worship Him, to be connected to Him. And He created creation for the human being. And when that proper relationship is maintained, everything works the way it was meant to work. Life is easy for the human being. Life is easy for the deputy, for the Khalifa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in creation. Yet when that relationship, its proper position is lost or forgotten, that's when life becomes difficult. That's where we become slaves and servants to the world. That's where the world then begins to oppress us. That's where we begin to experience increasing suffering from the very gifts of God. For the pious human being, the pious man, the pious woman, pious child, pious elder, blessings upon blessings will descend. So the message here, brothers and sisters, the reminder to myself, first and foremost, and to those of you who are tuning in and seeking, right, seeking purpose, seeking truth, seeking guidance, seeking light, seeking to be reminded, remain humble, remain pious, be thankful for the gifts of God by increasing your worship, increasing your remembrance, not abandoning it. Remember that Allah is in control. Any good that comes to you is going to come from Him. And any evil that befalls you is also being allowed to happen by His will. This is one of the pillars and principles of Aqidah, of our Iman. This is one of the pillars of Iman, the belief in destiny, that the good and the bad are from Allah. So Allah Almighty is in control. Every good that comes to us is through Him. And every evil or harm or difficulty that befalls us is also by His will for a divine purpose. Remembering that He's in control, first and foremost, let us stay connected to Allah. Let us stay humble. Let us honor the gifts He gave us by being pious, by staying in worship, by staying in remembrance, by increasing in learning and knowledge. The worst thing that we can do is take a certain path and get to a certain point where then His favor descends upon us and then we renege and we go backwards or we go in a different direction, taking his gifts not to remind us and to increase us in goodness, but then, then to make us again heedless and forgetful. We must keep moving forward, keep growing, keep learning, keep evolving, keep becoming more pious, more humble. This world is passing. This world is ending. Your life is going to end. All of this will be meaningless. It will all be turned to dust. Let us stay connected and stay deeply reverent to and with that which is absolute and eternal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us not make our religion to be part-time and play in amusement. It must be the center of our lives, the focus of our lives. This is the point of being a Muslim. This is the meaning of being a Muslim. I have a video that I did just recently as well, become a born-again Muslim. This is especially true for those of us who have been born into Islam. I, I tell you, we don't know what Islam is. We didn't consciously choose it, and so we have no idea what Islam really is. We've taken just a fraction of Islam and thinking that we're Muslims. There is no saved sect in Islam. There's no saved group of people. We are not going to be saved by simply virtue of identifying with Islam because our parents were Muslim, because we do a few prayers. Once in a while, we might do some dhikr. We might keep the fast of Ramadan. This is just an identity. 
Like we have to consciously step back and truly choose the path, which means to make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the center of our lives. Our Creator, our Lord, His remembrance must be the center of our lives. There is nothing better. There is nothing better than a life of piety, of worship, and of remembrance. That is where the blessings descend. That is where success is given. Health, abundance, prosperity, success both in this life and in the next. So, beloved brothers and sisters, stay true. Stay the course. Stay upon the path. Keep the way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the guidance, the wisdom, the strength. And I really, I'm, I'm asking humbly for myself as well. May Allah keep us aware, conscious, not to forget, not to become heedless, not to take His gifts and use them to forget Him, but rather to grow in remembrance, to grow in love, to grow in humility, to grow in gratitude with His gifts and through His gifts. Inshallah ta'ala, He will give more. Allah Almighty will give more and more so long as we are grateful and we stay in worship and in remembrance and we keep learning, growing, evolving, advancing and progressing upon the path. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. Fi amanullah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.